Hey, how you guys doing? This is Neil from MasterPaintingNow.com and I got a new uh, free lesson here for you. So I decided to try Krita 5, which you can get for free. And this is the result. This is the painting that we're going to be doing. And I just want to show here a little bit to kind of zoom in on her. She's actually really tiny in this painting, but I was able to get quite an amazing amount of detail on her. So yeah, the brushes feel amazing. The engine is amazing. And... Um, it really just allows you to do a lot of cool stuff. Main, mainly, I'm going to be using the RPG brushes. So let's go ahead and get started. So over here, if you click on this little drop-down menu right here, you can choose the different kind of brushes, the tags you tag them with. And they have, by default, these ones are tagged as the RGBA brushes. So that's how you get, that's an easy way to see all those. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the kind of blue sky color. It's going to just fill it in with the paint bucket tool, which is here. And then I'm gonna get my brush kind of big and you can see the brush that I'm using over here. I just wanna start putting in some of this other sky color. And I'm also using this brush too. So I kind of mess around with different brushes here. And also I mess around with the brush uh, maker tool and I kind of make this other brush uh, for doing trees and stuff, which uses like this kind of tip right here. I'm just testing different things. So what's really nice about this brush is it's very similar to this one here, but it kind of lays down opacity so you can, but it adds multiple colors. So it's not just one color that it's adding. And see if I press hard, you can kind of see that. And I really like that about this brush. And I can just start adding these different colors here. So I'm just kind of color picking now. So holding the Alt key, or actually might in this program, I think it might be the Control key for some reason. But I'm just kind of color picking some of these colors and then selecting colors up here that I want. And just getting kind of multiple. Look at, see how it adds this kind of multiplicity of colors? It really adds this kind of, you know, traditional look here, which is what I love. I love being able to get kind of that traditional look. But also it's the feel. It's super important. How does it feel doing the painting? It doesn't matter if you can get this really cool, you know, end result where it looks like, a traditional painting if the process isn't fun right the whole point for me is to have fun and so far i'm liking these brushes they're they're fun you know i'm having fun with it now i'm trying some of the under the tags here i chose paint just to try some of these paint brushes here just to see how they feel and i'm just kind of t i haven't used a lot of these brushes like i did do a quick testing just running through all the brushes to see how they feel and what they do kind of but, you know, you forget because, you know, I only went through it one time. So I'm just kind of seeing the different things it does here. And I want to, you know, a lot of colors in my background here in my sky before I begin to add my clouds. Again, just testing different things here, seeing what the brushes look like and feel like. This brush here is nice because um, it adds, you know, some multiplicity of color. All the RGB brushes do. But it also feels like kind of like a paintbrush. I can actually, you know, change it and get different feels with it. And, you know, I like doing impressionism. It's one of my favorite things to do. But you can definitely, you know, get realism with this, as you saw with the female and uh, that I painted in here. But it's kind of, you know, you don't have to do a whole bunch of details to achieve that. Like people think that realism should be that when even when you're zoomed really zoomed in everything should be really sharp but that doesn't have to be the case so under textures so if you click this drop down and choose uh, the textures there for your tag you can see some of these texture brushes and some of them are nice i actually used a few of them in this painting and so i'm kind of just i wanted to get a little bit of a cloud texture here kind of you can also probably use this for trees and bushes I just want to kind of get a little bit more texture back there. So when you're doing impressionism, the whole point is you're not trying, you're focusing more on the lighting and shadows, like how, you know, the contrast of the painting. By the way, if you just double click down here, it, re it, re it re reduces the rotation back. And I can't remember how to rotate now. I think it's like alt and space or something like that. You can look it up, but uh, there's different navigation tools. And I really don't like how the navigation tools work in the software it's totally different than others um, and also i'm pretty sure the color picker is control instead of alt for some reason like every other software is you know it's set to 
be alt and I don't know it's kind of so I had to like set up custom things for my Wacom properties and that was kind of annoying and I was still getting used to the navigation because it's totally different like how I zoom in and out and then move the canvas this little wheel here can come in handy you can set your favorite brushes on here and you can like pop it up to click them but I don't know selecting here to me is just as easy so And I think right now I'm just trying to figure out what's going on with my screen. So it's like I said, I haven't used this software in a long time and just wanted to check out number five to see if I can get some other kind of painting. You know, I love Paintstorm. Paintstorm is amazing, um, especially if you love that just kind of doing Bob Ross type paintings and you kind of want the feel. The feel of using Paintstorm is absolutely amazing. And doing like Bob Ross type paintings with it just feels so good. Um, but it also, you know, does really good impressionism and it's good at doing portraits and stuff. So it's just a good software. $20, own it for life. I love Paintstorm. It's my main, my go-to program. I have a lot of courses that use it. So I was just testing this brush here to see if I can get some interesting textures going on in the background there. But instead, I decided to go ahead and just use the, this version of it, which is kind of a more uh, blurry version. You can kind of control it, control its strength. And so what I'm trying to do here is like just add some like mountain type plane. I end up changing this later on. I wanted it to be way in the background, therefore a lot of atmosphere is covering it. So as things go deep in the background, you know, the atmosphere gets in the way. So in this case, it's kind of a blue atmosphere. Everything starts. And then I'm using this, this thick paintbrush here to kind of lay down some hills here in the background. And I wanted to start with this so I have some sort of texture to work with. Most of it gets covered, but you know. You leave a little bit of it, and a little bit of it shows through. And just a good, I think, starting point. Like I said, all these RBG brushes, I think, are nice. They add a lot of texture, you know? So add a lot of color variation. Um, whenever you're doing anything, nothing is ever just one solid color, right? That's a bunch of variations of that color and other colors. So if it's green, don't just do one type of green. Do many types of green some greens that are more brownish, some greens that are more bluish, some greens that are yellowish, you know, like really some greens that are really desaturated, almost gray. Really mix that around. And also these brushes do a good job of mixing multiple colors as well. And now I'm using this this brush here. I forget what it's called, but it's under the paint. So you can kind of see what the icon looks like. It's a default brush. Most everything I'm doing here is default brushes just to feel the program and it's really good, actually. I'm really impressed for, for a free program. It's come a long way. And I'll, honestly, um, you can just do the number four. Five hasn't added a whole lot. They do add these um, kind of oily brushes that are pretty nice, but I don't like use them very much. But I can see them really coming in handy for certain kinds of painting. So I'm just trying different brushes out now. Now, now, now I'm actually going to alter this brush and make one. So these here are like the RGBA, I believe, the one the ones with the colors on them. And so I'm using this one because I like the shape of it and I'm messing around to make like a kind of a tree brush here. And I'm just tweaking some parameters. The main parameter that I'm tweaking on it is the rotation. So I change rotation to um, be like for my pen tilt. So how I tilt my pen is you have to have a tablet that supports the pen tilt, but if so, it really comes in handy because you can like tilt it in the direction you want if you want that you know shape to face. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. I kind of like how it's working, just kind of testing it out. And uh, so now I can like tilt it and I can get different, you know, like here, see how I was able to tilt it and get these different branches. So this would be great for doing like trees and stuff. And I'm also just you know, kind of mess around to see is it possible for me to do like Bob Ross style paintings with this and maybe not but you can like the mountain things would be the hardest to replicate that paint storm just has this great brush I, I made for making mountains and it just feels like you're using a knife like Bob Ross and uh, like those kind of distant mountains with like snow on it so I still want to see if I can get something like that with this program But even if not, just these brushes are really fun to use, and it's really good for like impressionistic work. It should be great for doing like little scenes, you know, where you have like um, maybe a house with flowers and stuff. Be really good to do like the kind of paintings that um, what's her name, Ginger Cook, I think. 
She has some cool YouTube videos uh, for using for using acrylics. And she has this kind of, you know, impressionistic style that I like. Anyway, this program would be great for that. So I want to see what I test. Oh, I, I test different patterns too. I want to see if I if I do a different pattern, what do I get with this brush? And then I also end up saving different versions of the brush, and then I made custom icons. You see here. So this I just painted on the left, the left side, the right side, and the upper side. That shows me that this one is facing left, right. And this one's facing up. So it's just all the same brush, just facing different rotations. So it's just really easy to kind of use it for different things. All right, so that was about the first 45 minutes. Um, again, messing with a lot of different stuff. So once you get a good workflow, it wouldn't take this long. One thing with the Bob Ross type paintings with um, my Paintstorm brushes and Paintstorm, I can bust out a really nice Bob Ross landscape painting in about you know 20 minutes, 30 minutes really easily. But this kind of painting takes a little bit longer because you're you're doing more detail. I'm just again messing with different brushes. Uh, this kind of brush texture, I'll be using that later. And then now I'm going right back to the RGBA brush. These are definitely the best, I think, for laying down a good foundation because it adds like color variation. I'm just kind of using a brush that I made. It's kind of a version of this brush here. It uses that same tip. That RGBA tip. I just changed the mainly. I just changed how it works with the rotation of the brush, so I can use my tilt to do that. Again, this is one of the brushes in Paint. You can see I like this brush here. It adds it adds a nice texture, it has a little bit of grit to it. You also see I use that kind of texture brush back here that had the kind of leaf leaf texture. Just kind of added some variation there. So these hills are way in the background. These ones are not so far in the background, but a little bit of atmosphere here, especially at the bottom. And then here you have mountains that are much closer, or a hill that's much closer. Don't worry, this is all just practice. I'm going to be covering that up. I was just testing out a brush on the canvas. I'm working all on one layer here. Um, I only use a different layer when I add like objects that. I'm not sure if I'm going to want or, you know, like a person. So when I once we get to the female, which takes almost takes a little bit of time, almost an hour, I think. So now I'm using uh, smaller brushes here. So you can see under the paint, I'm using this kind of almost like an ink brush here to add these fine, fine lines in the background. You can use like a pencil or something. I just want to Get those water lines. It really helps sell the shoreline. You don't want just a straight horizontal line. You kind of want like little zigzags. Some that kind of come a little bit forward. Some that kind of go back to kind of show like this isn't just a straight shoreline. It has some, you know, it comes out toward us, goes back, you know, like a shoreline should. And then adding a lot of just color variation in the reflection to kind of, you know, all the colors of that what it's what's being reflected down. So all this here, all the hill. Now technically it would go all over here too, but I already have a plan for all this over here, so I want to add like bushes and stuff. So there's no reason for me to paint something I don't need to paint since I'm going to be covering it up. I was just kind of messing with this brush to see what kind of shapes I can get for birds. I try to do everything I can with as few strokes as possible. Like that's what impressionism to me like, was so fun about it. Is like what can I get away with just with a few brush strokes? You know, two brush strokes and I have a bird. So here I'm messing around with the different texture brushes here to start putting in some foundation. I start with a dark color, and then you can start adding other colors on top of that. So again, these brushes are, are look at look all that look at all that color variation it adds just by doing a few brush strokes. Really, really powerful brushes, these RGBA brushes. I need to learn how to make an RGBA texture. I haven't learned how to do that yet, but it, it's definitely a special kind of texture that allows this to happen. So I want to learn if, you know, how to make my own custom brush tips. 
Look at all that. I love that. Like that looks so much like paint. It looks it just looks and feels good, has depth to it. So yeah, the RGBA brushes are fantastic. You know, I definitely I think I think I definitely want to do a full painting with just those brushes. Like a, um I could probably get away with just using one of those brushes. But I want to do like a maybe a portrait or something. So here I'm just adding a little bit of shoreline. I'm using my custom version of this brush here. Again, mainly all I did is took this standard brush and then I just changed the um, rotation to be my pen tilt so I can you know, hold it sideways like that and get a kind of horizontal line with it. So I'm trying to you know, use a bigger brush to start that and then maybe I can come in with a finer detail brush later and kind of make those water lines. So I wanted some like fall feel here. And I'm kind of being inspired by a famous painting. Really great way to um, come up with new paintings is like look at a couple or, or even just one like classic, you know, landscape painting to get a feel for colors and everything. But just kind of change it a little bit, maybe add your own bushes, shapes and stuff like that. Or even just try to reproduce it, but with digital, so it's going to be different because you're, you know, it's not going to be exactly what you're looking at. This brush is really cool under textures. Um, I like it a lot. I changed the rotation to pen tilt because it naturally wants to just kind of. I want to be able to control, you know, where these kind of blotches and the shapes of these blotches show up here. And so I kind of start with this kind of orangeish color. Then I want to add maybe a more bright orange going more toward yellow. And look at that, by using this brush here, look how much color variation I added to my bush, it's so cool. And I wanted it kind of more blurry, but then I wanted a few little details, so I'm just kind of using some texture brushes to kind of add a little bit of detail into here, so you can kind of see some individual leaves or something. Using that same texture brush again. Using this one now, a splatter one, to kind of add what looks like could be like little flowers or leaves. Unfortunately, I lost a bunch here. Um, so I forgot I paused it when I was recording. I forgot to unpause it because I needed to like go do something else on my PC really fast and then uh, forgot to unpause it when I came back. Basically what I did is I just um, you know added some dark here and then I added some light. So there's like dark on one side. I like, kind of add like a rock that maybe has some stuff growing on it. And then a kind of rock shape here, just added some dark and added some lighter tan color and then a little bit of tan on top, so it's like some stuff growing on it. And I used the rock brush actually here under texture, this brush right here. Well, not under texture, it's under the RGBA brushes. Um, I just kind of painted a few things here you know, over. It's really kind of a cool brush and adds a real quick rock structures. And I also, if it's not, I think it's already set to tilt, but I think if not, I switched it to where I can use the rotation for tilt, so I can tilt the rocks. It actually flipped on me, so I, this software is different, so it's under image, and then you have the mirror image horizontally, so I was just trying to look where that was, because it's different than other softwares. I don't know why they don't just stick to convention. But look at all that variation right in here, because I'm using the RGBA brushes, and all in here just looks so good. It really adds that nice kind of painterly feel, that traditional feel. And I love being able to just push the boundary of trying to get, you know, digital to look more traditional. That's that rock brush, and then I'm kind of, I just wanted to, it's also kind of good to just throw down some shapes sometimes with it. And then some 3D shapes, and then I can then come in and, you know, same thing with the other brush, the other RGB brush that adds like this, just really kind of cool shapes I can use and I can come back in and so kind of fix it up and this is kind of giving me an interesting shape for a tree. So here's I'm using that texture brush here that has the leaves on it and I think I'm going to import some other shapes uh, that aren't so hard to find on the edges uh, to kind of make my own like I have really I have a really couple good shapes that I use in Paintstorm so I should be able to uh, incorporate that into this program so I can use my own texture or brush tip shape for that. I want to kind of blur it out, so I use a few other things, and then now I'm adding another, a couple other colors here. 
adding some fall colors, different kind of red browns, and then I'm going to probably put some gold on top of that to make it really pop, like that's what the light's really hitting. Like so, and then see now you have you have this kind of like steps to like variation. So see it's like dark here, and then kind of lighter, and then dark again, and that kind of makes it look like it's going back into space. Um, I could have made this you know li even lighter, but like sometimes you know it might be a darker thing. And again, I'm going by the inspiration of a really good painter that already had laid down a good foundation, but it's a good trick to do. Now I'm just using. Um, you know, some smaller paint brushes here, just making them small in size so I can kind of feel that in the background. I also downloaded some brushes from this guy, but honestly, he doesn't really, I don't know, he doesn't really do much to them. They're kind of like just standard brushes. I mean, he might have changed a few little things like pressure, sens pressure sensitivity. And uh, if I use them for the female, you'll see, you know, I think they're, I think they're called Darpy. You know, they're free to download. So this brush is interesting. A um, couple of these brushes here, these purple ones, kind of this like oil smudge feel. And for you can use that and then use like a smudge tool as well and kind of smudge out the bottoms. And it adds an interesting, you know, cloud texture. And kind of, like I said, smudge out the bottoms there. But there's another one here I like, this one here. It adds a little bit of texture and also this one. And you can kind of get a kind of, oily kind of paint look you know i should have now that i think about this cloud right here i kind of like the way that looks right there i'm, I'm almost thinking i could have kept that kind of sharper look there but i end up changing it because so i was just playing around different things and i think i end up using yeah that kind of texture brush there so it's like a texture version of this oily brush here and I end up adding that. But it looks nice. And we're almost done with the main, you know, the major part of this painting. Just now I'm just going to add a few little things here and there and just kind of like, what can I do to kind of, I don't know why it, it switched to this brush for some reason. I'm not sure why it did that. I think I might actually click something. I wanted some variation in that darkness. I didn't want it to be completely dark. So I'm just throwing some variation there in this area. Kind of changing this over here a little bit. So I end up, you know, noodling around a lot like this when I get toward the end. Like what other little subtleties can, subtleties can I add? Little variations here and there. Maybe some flowers. I'm, I'm starting with a really dark color here first. But notice because I'm using these RG, RGBA brushes, it adds variation even in the dark which is really cool. Then I'm adding a little bit of, um, you know, kind of brownish color on top of that. And then here we go. We got a little bit of using this, this again, this texture brush here. I like a lot to add some detail. And I want that some of this detail to kind of pop more because we're coming out more into the foreground. So as we get closer to the camera, we can pop more details. And look at that. Just using this brush, a couple different variations and just kind of pushing a different different directions. Look at that really nice colors that happens. You just can't get that with without an RGB brush. It would be so hard to get that much variation. I really like this brush. So in uh, paint, it's this one right here. It's the third brush in paint. It might change, but just that's the icon. It just has this kind of thicker. It's right next to this brush here. And uh, it has a nice feel to it, you know, for like a fine tip brush. You know, I was originally going to leave this out. I was just going to put some stuff here and then leave that as dead branches. And I don't know why I decided to put stuff there. Just kind of got in the moment and did it. I'm almost thinking it would have looked better if those branches were bare, just to kind of show a couple of bare branches. And it took a lighter kind of reddish brown color to add some highlight here reflective light because the light's all kind of coming over here to the right and so it's kind of bouncing off stuff and coming back up on the undersides of the branches. And I'm just trying a bunch of different texture brushes and stuff just to see what I can get here. I'm just kind of experimenting. So if I had a flow already in this program, this wouldn't have taken me nearly as long. 
but I was just experimenting with so many different brushes and kind of getting a feel for stuff. This is a nice brush too, under, under sketch brushes. So the one right next to this roller brush, these two are really nice. And look at that, got some nice little details on the tree over there. Again, just want it, it's more in the foreground, so I really want that to pop. And I'm saving it, um, save often. Okay, now I'm going to show you the first attempt at a, at a woman, which I didn't like at all. Then we'll do this. I'll just fly through that, and then we'll do the second attempt, which is the final version. But this right here is the landscape. The landscape's pretty much done now. I do end up altering the background mountains, I think, a little bit, because I don't really like this shape here. Um, but yeah, so that's really how you do like a landscape. Then you can decide to add something that adds character. I think when you just do landscapes by themselves with, not, with no, nothing, no other objects, they're nice to look at and they're neat, but they don't tell a story. You know, just by adding one character, it tells a story. Like you, can, like the original painting um, that I get inspiration from. Again, I don't remember the name of it, otherwise I would show it to you. But if you recognize, you'll know it, it has like a, um, an elk here or something like that. There's a deer or elk or something like that here, and it's kind of like looking down. That adds a story. Like why is the elk there? Because he's there to get water or something like that. You know, and you can have, you can even add more of a story by having the elk here and then in the foreground hiding in the bushes here, just partly visible. Maybe the backside of a lion or something. You know, or like a panther. That would tell an interesting story. But I, I just adding the the female. You know, is is nice. It adds a story to it just by adding the female to this picture. Suddenly, there's a kind of a story being told, like, why is she there? Why is she shirtless? You know, she has no shirt on. Maybe she's about to go swimming. I could have added a guy in the pool that would have told a different story. Um, adding adding a guy that's already in the water. Um, then you're like, oh, they're about to go skinny dipping. But just little things like that tell a story. Um, I could have added other objects around her that could have told a different story as well. Like, I don't know, a ball or something like that, right? You can kind of hint at different things. Let's go ahead and get rid of that really quick. And let's add in the next. So I usually um, record in like about an hour intervals. I don't like to go over that because then it's harder to kind of scrub through it and show things. So this one's going to be kind of fast. I'm going to zoom out here so I can really just kind of scrub through this quickly because I end up not liking the results. I already saw my name. And then I decided I uh, want to change the background a little bit like that, add a little bit of snow on the mountains. And again, I was just using a little texture brush and it came out nice. So here's the first attempt. The first attempt, I kind of just, I wasn't even sure if I wanted a person in the scene. I wasn't even sure if it was going to be a female. I just wanted something there. So using these, um, I'm using a lot of the brushes from, oh, it's Dryad. So D-R-Y-A-D. So type that in, free credit brushes Dryad. And they should show up. They're by David something. And uh, they're free. So they're kind of cool. And uh, they're really just, a lot of them are really similar to the, the stock brushes you can really do this with just the brush brushes it comes with but they have a little different different feel so you can try them and um, stuck on how I want to do the hands and I decided the thumb should be facing away from us and I decided to change your pose a little bit I'm like okay that's actually all right I have a little bit of color variation and then like she's really tiny kind of short and I'm like okay that's a decent thing to get me started on an idea then I decide what I want Sometimes you just have to do something, even though it took like, you know, 30 minutes to do that. It gives me a chance to kind of just feel like, is this what I want? Is this kind of what I'm going for? Maybe bigger or smaller. And because she's on her own layer, I can actually make her bigger or smaller and get a feel for it. And then go, okay, what about a different pose though? So I was like, just, a, just, I, I needed to go through that process to get to where I wanted to be, which is why I'm showing it. Because it's important to like, kind of see the process, how you get to the end result. All right, and that's also why I showed the end result, so you can kind of see where I was going. So start with a quick, um, just using this kind of brush here to get kind of a quick sketch in. Basic idea that I want. And then I'm going to kind of zoom in now. And I had refined the sketch a little bit, started adding some color. And notice the feet, that's really all you have to do. It, like, I want to show this. It doesn't take much to, to paint. When you're when you're painting a figure this small, it doesn't take much. So I have a couple little shapes that are blocked out for the feet. And then all I'm going to do is add a couple variations here. So a little bit of uh, a, a redder color for the bottom of the heel. And then like that, a little bit of 
brighter color for the side of the foot here being hit because she's on her she's on her tippy toes here so she's coming up like this and then a little bit of brighter color to kind of show what the light's hitting and then a little bit of darker color under there there you go see that so it shows the transition of the heel to the underside of the foot some shadow that's all it takes it doesn't take much like when you're really close like that yeah you don't really it's what that's what how impressionism is as you get close to an impressionistic painting you can see all these individual brush strokes and texture and stuff and it's fantastic and then as you as you kind of pull away from the painting in real life you would just kind of step a couple feet away all of a sudden it like reads really well and so that's what i love about impressionism you can just a few brush strokes you know and it's just fun to do it's so much funner than trying to noodle with with so much detail and just rendering is just so boring to me and i love i just love impressionism i love monet um, rembrandt believe it or not is like a realism but it's like a painterly realism if you get close to his paintings you can see all the brush strokes and stuff it's very more impressionistic i mean it's not considered impressionism but if you get close you can just it doesn't look nearly as as detailed because you can see all the brush strokes and then as you kind of step away it's like man it looks like realism you know it's so always kind of do i kind of strike a balance between that between impressionism and like painterly realism and so look at here i'm just doing a few brush strokes i'm not like i don't it's too small to zoom way in and noodle with all these little details just a little brush stroke here look at one stroke there one stroke there one stroke there right maybe two strokes for the elbow but it's just a few strokes like watch look at this let's go back here so watch um Let's go to right where well, I'm going to add these strokes here. I'm not like blending them. I'm just doing a stroke, right? So I did that one stroke right there. Let's play this in real time. I'm going to do that one stroke right there. It's like, okay, that's nice. A couple strokes there to kind of just kind of blend it out a little bit. And then I'm going to add one stroke here for the darker line. Boom, that's it, one stroke. And then I might come back in here and add this lighter stroke just like that bam look so just a few strokes and you have form you you're just trying to um especially if you're looking at you know reference like if you're looking at real life or if you're looking at a photo or something and you, you're trying to emulate that you just want to think about it like how can i emulate that with the few strokes possible and that just takes time but focus on the major forms that's what you're trying to you're trying to represent the major forms and look at that so from from really up close it's like, yeah, that's kind of, you know, a little bit sloppy or almost you would think, or, you know, like you can see, like this is almost a little bit of blurry of a brush, but it, lo it looks fine from a distance. So I left it, but maybe you can come in here and, you know, add some little bit of fine, finer detail to the hair, but look at from a distance, it reads fantastic. And that's where you're going to be seeing the picture. Like this is how you're going to view the picture online. This is about how you'd view it if you were in person and you were hanging on a wall. You wouldn't like be right up close to it. This is mostly how you'd see it. But if you got really up close, you can like appreciate how it was done. And I love that about this kind of painting style. Look at that. you can tell she's on her on her tippy toe. You can tell these are feet. It all reads. And that's what you want. But I'm not done yet because I need to add a little bit more variation here. And so I'm just kind of noodling around, adding a little more detail, a little more variation. I wanted that highlight right there. And then here is where I'm going to go and I'm going to change my brush style to, um, well, first off, I'm going to click this little icon on the layer. So remember, she's on her own layer. If you click this little transparency icon right there, I don't know if you can see that, but it's right there. Anyway, it's the one on the right-hand side of the layer options. You click that, it allows you to only paint the pixels that are on that layer. So I won't be able to paint anything but her, because she's the only thing on the layer. And then now I'm going to change my brush up here. You can see how I'm changing it up here. I'm going to change it to overlay. And this will allow me to just kind of take some greens and take some of these colors from the ground and kind of just blend it up very lightly into her. And then I'm going to take some blues and stuff and just add a little bit of the sky into her body, her upper body. So kind of more of the blues and things like that. I, I went too far there. It almost looks like her hair is glowing. I don't like it. So I'm going to pull that back with, no, with a normal brush. But see, just adding a little bit of variation and kind of darkening her skin up and stuff. Because see how light she was here? And then when I add all that, boom, she really fits into the scene more. 
So adding a lot of the background colors into her uh, really kind of helps her fit into the whole painting. It's a really cool trick to use. And especially this, this bottom part, you know, using all these ground colors and kind of just blending it up just a couple strokes and just blend all those colors right into her using the overlay brush. And there you go. That's the final piece. And so it kind of, you know, tells a story, a different story just by having a character there, you know. And there's other things I could have done to told a story. Like I said, I could have had a guy down here kind of waving at her, like maybe half of his body's in the water. And just his like upper chest is sticking out and his arm is waving up at her, you know, like, hey, come in or something like that, you know. Uh, you could have put a boat of people down here or something like that. And that would have told a different story. So it's kind of cool to do that kind of thing. And, you know, having different objects here, like now I'm thinking about it, maybe I can come back and revisit this painting and I can add the guy down there, maybe add some stuff up here, maybe add her shirt to show that she's taking it off, have it draped over this rock or something um, so you can actually see her shirt. And then maybe like, I don't know, a couple of beer bottles or something like that. They'd be really small, though. You might be able to tell what they are. But yes, that's it. Um, paint or Critter 5 is really good. For a free program, it's really amazing. Uh, these brushes are amazing. And yeah, there's not really anything else out there that will, that's going to, I think, get that same feel as those RGBA brushes do. I mean, I think Photoshop has some you can kind of make that are, that work kind of similarly. But, you know, Photoshop, you're, you're looking, you're paying $20 a month for it. And that's stupid. That's why I stopped using it. I still like Photoshop, but honestly, Paint PaintStorm for me is just better. That was the original reason why I kind of moved away from, from Photoshop. I don't really mind too much paying the monthly fee when I need to use Photoshop, but I just haven't needed it because PaintStorm does pretty much everything I need it to do. Uh, I love it. it. It feels so much better than Photoshop. There was a certain kind of uh, painter style that I was that I like in Photoshop I was doing with these certain brushes, but um, anyway... And then uh, Krita, though, I can see, like, filling that niche, that kind of, this kind of more, this kind of painterly style here. You know, it's not really a Bob Ross style, but it's nice. I like this style a lot. You know, overall, this painting took me, like, three hours. But I know once I get a workflow going, I can reduce this down to, like, an hour, especially if there's no characters. You know, each character is going to take 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how much detail you add to it. Like, you know, she took me about 45 minutes. Um, and once I have a workflow going, I'll probably get her down to about 30 minutes. But still, that's, you know, 30 minutes for that kind of level of detail. But 30 minutes, you know, extra on top of, let's say, an hour for doing the, you know, hour to hour and a half for doing this kind of landscape. But still, it's really fun, and that's the important part, is that you enjoy the process. So, Anyways, that's it. Hey, if you like this kind of stuff and you want to learn how to actually do this kind of stuff, especially if you want to learn how to do like a Bob Ross thing, take my Bob Ross course. Check out masterpaintingnow.com. The link is in the description. Um, I often have sales on my courses, so check that out. And if you want one of my courses and they're not on sale right now, just leave a comment in this um because I, I see those the best. Like, if you email me and stuff, I might never get it. But if you just leave a comment to YouTube, I will definitely see it, and I will respond to. It. And I can I can reply to your comment with a link. So make sure to like be checking back. You know, like have your YouTube where you can see if I reply back to you, and I can put a link there for a course you want. Just let me know what course you want, and uh, I can put a link there for you so you can get it on sale. All right, thanks guys for watching, and also females obviously. I have a feeling mostly guys watch my channel, but um, for all you females that do, I support your awesome uh, support. I appreciate your support. Thanks.